Friends, thank you so much for joining us. We are here live in Windsor, England. You can see Windsor Castle right behind me for the big romantic royal wedding and i'm joined by kate williams who is our royal historian you've been on hand and you will be throughout this oh, yes it's so great to have you so let's talk about the big breaking news and that is you know there was all this speculation about what's going to happen if Meghan markle's dad doesn't show up who will walk her down the aisle she put out that statement yesterday that she was sad her father would not be able to come because of medical issues and others and now it's been announced that she will for much of the walk be unaccompanied she will walk herself down the aisle at some point, Prince Charles, Harry's father, will join her and walk her part of the way, but he will stop before handing her off to Prince Harry because he's not going to give her away. He's just going to accompany her. What do you make of it? Well, it is such exciting news about the wedding, and we have seen all this drama this week about the will, they won't, they're about the Markles, and I think this is a really exciting moment about modernizing the monarchy because here we have, it's a very old tradition. We've seen every bride uh, so often in royal history, after Queen Victoria, who did, Queen Victoria did actually walk her daughters up the aisle, but um, being handed over by their fathers. And Meghan is doing something completely new. We've said she's going to modernize the monarchy, and look at this. So she's going to walk the first half, as you said, with her page boys, with her bridesmaids, and the and dean, they're little kids, and they're little kids. There are ten of them. And, and walk up with her. That and that could be hilarious that because, I mean, hilarious. some of them are really little. I mean, so Charlotte and George will be doing it too? Charlotte and George. And we also have the Mulroney children, three of, the, three of them, and then Meghan's children, Meghan's godchildren, and then uh, Prince Harry's godchildren. Ten children. They're all very small, so that could be great fun. Anything could go great wrong. Fun. Anything could go wrong. And I do think it's so exciting that uh, Meghan is giving herself away. It does seem a little bit outdated these days to have a father hand over a daughter when so many of the women who marry these days, brides, they're independent women, they've been working, they've been earning their own money. It's, it's like completely. It's easy to catch up. And you know what's so funny is that it's not just the royal family that obviously follows that tradition, most weddings follow that tradition. So she's doing something uncon very uncon un un unprecedented for the royal family, but unconventional even in just regular weddings. And because she's doing it, it makes us all think, oh, that is an outdated practice. Yes, it does make us all think, doesn't it? So I think many people just think, actually, people have been saying this on social media, actually, why, why do we need a man? When suddenly we didn't think that Thomas Markle was coming and people said, who could be the male stand-in? People said, why do we need a man? Why can't Doria do it? Why can't she do it herself? And certainly, I, when we think of Queen Victoria, who walked two of her daughters up the aisle, she felt that she didn't want her son doing it or her, a random second cousin. She felt that she was the most superior person. She was the queen. No one was more qualified mm -hmm. than she was. So why not? And I do think that we could see a complete change in royal in, in, wed, in wedding fashions now, that increasingly we might see brides walking themselves at the mm -hmm. aisle or with her whole family. Why not have all of the family with you rather than just the father? Because she is a trendsetter. Megan is a trendsetter. She's certainly a fashion trendsetter. I know you've marveled at my fascinator. I, love it. I, love I do I too. Love the look. I Fantastic. want to wear this every day. I'm going to try to institute this in the US. <laughs> I, I think it. that this could be an everyday headpiece. I don't find wonderful. it too obtrusive or distracting. Um, so, what is the odds on favorite for what she'll be wearing for her wedding Well, dress? just to say the Queen would love your outfit because the Queen likes bright outfits and smaller hats. So you, uh, it is perfect. I am and, perfect. Uh, I hope the Queen is watching she this. She might be taking some fashion hints. We don't know what color she's going to be wearing. She's been wearing some very bright colors ever since she's hit her 90s. But, uh, <laughs> she's really she's really tearing it up since she's become she 92. Is. Why not? Go <laughs> wild. I think Meghan will be wearing something very classic and a lot of embroidery and probably not the huge meringues we've seen in the past. That's just a bit, a bit too big for uh, St. George's Chapel. But there is the question that she is going to go up the steps so far, we believe, alone. Oh, let's talk about this because her walk is long. So her first she has long. to go up the, steps, up the steps and then she's going to walk part of the way down the carpet uh, unaccompanied. Yes. And then at the choir, the Q-U-I-R-E, oh, which right. is where the guests are that's seated, it. that's where Prince Charles joins her. That's where Prince Charles joins us. So 150 guests in the choir, other ones on the outside section. Actually, it's quite difficult to see when you're not in the choir. But uh, we remember when Kate went to Westminster Abbey, she got out of the car, and then Pippa was there, came out to meet her, sorted out the train, got her ready to go in. So who's going to help Meghan? That's the question. Maybe she doesn't have a huge train. Mm. And also, we always see, just before the bride starts heading up the aisle, the designer is usually hidden uh, over on the right-hand side, and they mm. pop out and start adjusting the train and making it look perfect for the photos. So 
It may be that Doria, who's accompanying her in the car, she may take her up the steps, or maybe Megan will do it herself. We are, we will wait and see. There's so much news yet to go. It's completely, and it is all laden with symbolism and significance and poignance, particularly because we know a little bit about her family and that the road has not always been sort of delivered to her on a silver platter. And I think that that makes her relatable. And so many people can um, relate to family drama around a wedding, you know? <laughs> well, it's so true, Alison, isn't it, that every wedding tends to get family drama going uh, in all types totally. of families. It's, it's where, the, where the emotions are running the most high. And I think that is really fantastic about Meghan. Ever since Prince Harry has been born, people said what kind of woman he'd marry. And they were all British aristocrats. They, they were all sort of person with a castle in Scotland. And they were all white. And Meghan is a self-made woman. She's a feminist. She's earned her own money. We believe maybe she's worth $8 million or more. And that's an incredible sum. And she is a determined, feminist, go-getting woman. She hasn't been waiting for her prince. And she's going to do a lot for the royal family. How do you think they're both preparing today? What are they doing at this hour, 24 hours well, beforehand? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we know that Doria is meeting the Queen today. And she's going to have tea with the Queen. Tea with the and queen. by the way, is that going to be awkward? I mean, when you first meet the Queen and you have to have tea with the Queen, is, it, is, it, is there going to be any fun in this experience? Well, I actually think that Doria and the Queen are going to get on like a house on fire. Because I think Doria is a much more informal woman. Meghan said she was a free spirit. Harry said, oh, she's marvelous. I love her. So I think that Doria isn't the type of person perhaps to freeze up. Many people, when they meet the Queen, panic and can't think of a single thing to say. But I think Doria has met a lot of people. She's very relaxed. She is this free spirit lady, as Meghan says. I think that the Queen and she will really get on because I think she'll have a lot to say to the Queen. And certainly I think the Queen has a lot of sympathy with Doria because she's seen over the weeks how Meghan's family have been thrust into the limelight and we understand that uh, Doria has given up her job at the mental health unit and mm. to give, make set up her own practice but that's the official line but I I do wonder whether perhaps the paparazzi were, were outside the mental health unit and upsetting some of the patients mm. so she felt she had to move on so because that is what we heard with her father I mean with Megan's father the paparazzi did kind of plague him you know they took pictures of him in sort of unflattering light they rented a house, we're told, right next to his so that they could get closer shots that are, you know, um, in through windows and stuff like that. And then they were following him. And all of that just brings up the tragedy of Prince Harry's mom and how she was hounded. And so there's, I don't know, those echoes are really unfortunate. You're so right, Alison. It does bring up the echo of Princess Diana. And Harry is so protective of Meghan. We saw when the news broke that they were dating, he issued that very uncompromising statement saying, there's been sexism, there's been racism. She, she and her family have been uh, harassed and, and tormented. And he's, very, he's, it's, he's still, obviously, he misses his mother. And he does blame some of the media for her death, the intrusive uh, paparazzi chasing her. And certainly it's very painful to him that he hasn't been able to protect Meghan or her family. Once you're in Windsor Castle, no one could get a photo of you. But the outside, it's very difficult. And it is difficult for those who marry into the royal family because they, they have to go about their daily lives. They want to go back to work. And how is that possible when you've got eight photographer it's dog, not. Uh, you know, vans waiting outside? Yeah. So you've seen these weddings before. What are you waiting for? What are you watching most closely? Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait for the dress. I can't wait for the moment that she's walking in. I, I really, what is so exciting to me is the fact that Duke of Edinburgh is going to be there, the Queen's going to be there, all the royal family, and everyone is going to be so joyful and the moment, I think, when Harry sees Meghan for the first time, because he hasn't seen that dress yet, the Queen has inspected it. Is that right? Hold on a second. So the Queen, did the Queen have to give approval for the dress? She did. She did. So, so what does that tell us, that it will be more, a more conservative dress? I mean, because, you know, that Ralph and Russo dress that she wore for their engagement was so beautiful, but it was sheer, it was sheer. and it was very fashion forward. And so do you think that the Queen would um, go for something that is really unconventional? Well, the Queen is a very fashionable woman herself, and she has been getting, as we were saying, more daring in her fashion choices ever since she's hit 90, and I hope it's the same for all of us. <laughs> but uh, uh, it will be, I think, much more conventional than the engagement gown. We're probably looking at high necks, uh, no strapless, uh, not much sheer. But the Queen inspected it this week. It's a tradition. The bride always shows the Queen her dress in the castle, so it's boxed up in there waiting and uh, and the moment when prince harry sees that for the first time 
um, because they adore each other. That's so clear from when we see them together. Definitely. I, I mean, he'll practically faint, I think. I think I will, too, watching all of this romance. Um, Kate Williams, great. Thank you thanks so much. So much. I look forward to having Thank you shepherd you. us through all of this tomorrow. And thanks to all of you for watching. Can't wait. See you tomorrow.